Hello and welcome back to the Babylon channel. My name is Patrick and today I want to expand on a little bit of what we did last time, which was to bring lighting from the scene into our node material. Uh, today what I want to do is take the next step. Uh, rather than just using color on our object, we want to use textures as well. So uh, one of the things I wanted to do is find a cool asset that could show off the lighting in enemy. So uh, what we did is we went to NASA. Uh, NASA has released this CGI moon kit, which is pretty cool um, because it has a diffuse map and a height map which is uh, really awesome of the terrain of the moon. And it's done in really, really high resolution. So what I did is I took these textures and um, brought them into ZBrush and baked out a normal map and then uh, into Substance Designer and created uh, a spec gloss map. So uh, we're able to get a diffuse spec gloss and normal out of this asset. Um, and so what we wanna do is bring that into the playground and set up a node, node material. Um, and so I do have one uh, playground set up here. Uh, and let me get rid of this and we will pull this up. Um, this is a very quick uh, playground. Um, I do have a button here that lets us to rotate the camera or rotate the light. Um, and so right now you're not gonna see a whole lot because uh, it's a sphere. Um, and so this sphere has been UV mapped to work specifically with these textures. Um, but what we want to do is uh, bring in our node material from last time. And so uh, if we, you remember what we talked about was if you have a, a node material in the node material editor, you can save it out uh, and it saves out a JSON file for you. Um, so then we can take this and load it into anything else. So uh, you can tell right now our material is uh, blank. There's nothing in it. And uh, if I come in here and open up our node material editor, uh, let's reorganize so we can see what's going on here. And let's set up our space a little bit um, so that we've got node material on the right here and our scene on the left. And then let me pull this a little bit in we can cover up the moon a little bit just so we have a little bit more real estate on the node material editor. So you can see this is the default shader that you get when you open up a node material for the first time. Um, and that's why we don't have anything on the moon. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna load in uh, the JSON file from the last time. And I've, I've saved it out uh, and called it basic light JSON. So when we load this in, you'll see that we get our entire node tree that we created in the last video. Um, very much the same. We've still got a diffuse color and a specular color. We've got our gloss plot power float, which is our static um, or our constant uh, value. We've got our glossiness uh, raised to the power of four so that we can uh, have better uh, control over the, the gloss values. Um, and then adding together the diffuse and specular outputs and sending it out to the fragment output. So what we want to do now is we want to bring in a few textures. So we've got a diffuse color and a specular color. We're going to replace that with a diffuse texture and a specular texture. Uh, so let's start with that because that's, those are the easy ones. Um, so let's come down here to inputs and we want a texture here. And we're going to rename this one so we can see it to diffuse. Um, so then the reason it's important is if you want to call this from code to change out uh, whatever texture happens to be in your diffuse uh, uh, texture node that you've wired up that way, uh, n renaming it this way allows you to easily call it in code and then you know you're getting the right texture. If you didn't rename any of them, they would all be, you know, named texture and then you wouldn't know which one you'd be, you'd be gra grabbing. So um, getting in the habit of renaming uh, variables that you might want to change your code is always a good, good idea. Uh, so I'm just going to upload our textures here. So I've got our three diffuse, normal, and specular textures here on the desktop. Um, and there's two things you can do. You can either embed it or you can link to it. Uh, right now, I'm just embedding it because it's easier than um, bringing in a link, but uh, that will bloat your file. So when I embed a texture in 
the node material, we are actually serializing the texture into the JSON file. So you don't want to have tons of textures in your JSON file because then that makes it unnaturally big. Um, using a link is great, uh, but then you do have to store it somewhere that is available online. So uh, that's the trade-off. But uh, for now, in ease, uh, I'm just going to embed the textures. Uh, so then the next part here, I'm just going to drag the RGB into diffuse color. And you'll notice on the left, we have our moon already updated. And that's because I'm working in the playground uh, and have opened the node material editor from the playground. So we already have that connection back. So anything, any change we make here in the node material editor is going to be reflected right back in the playground, which is great. Um, so now we don't need this diffuse color anymore. We can get rid of that. And now we want another texture, and this will be our specular texture. And we'll call this one specular. And then we will upload our specular texture. And now what I did with the specular texture is what you would normally do in a, a blend fong material, which is to put the gloss texture in the alpha channel of the specular texture. So we will take the RGB to get specular color and wire it to specular color. So now you saw that changed a little bit. Uh, it's kind of a, a middle gray color, uh, so that pulls the specular down. Um, and then get rid of the specular color because we don't need that anymore. Now, the difference here is that uh, I'm going to rearrange these nodes just a little bit. Um, it can get a little crowded here. So you want to be careful uh, how you lay out your nodes so that you can easily trace what's happening. Um, we're going to take the alpha of the specular and then bring it up into this value of power because that was where our glossiness was. Uh, our gloss is now being controlled by the alpha channel of the specular texture. So we just want to uh, remove the float because we don't need that anymore and let specular uh, be driven, uh, driving both the specular color and the glossiness value. So that's great. So now we have our, uh, let me go over here and we can see as I rotate the light on the moon, um, you can see there is some nice specular going on, some nice glossiness in the moon surface. But the one thing that we're missing is, uh, as you know, there's a bunch of craters on the moon. And so that will be the normal map, and we'll be able to see that in the lighting. But right now, this looks super smooth because there's no uh, height or normal information on the, on the sphere itself. So what we want to do is come back here, and we need to bring in uh, another texture which is uh, going to be our normal map. Uh, but we're going to have to wire it up slightly different. Um, right now, uh, if you look at here in our lights node, uh, we have our world position, norm, uh, world normal, camera position, gloss, glossiness, gloss power, diffuse color, and specular color. Now, we need to perturb the world normal. And what that means is we're going to take a, a normal texture and combine it with the normal of the mesh transformed in by the world matrix. And then that information is going to go into our world normal. Right now, what we've got is just the mesh normal being transformed by the world matrix. So the only thing we're getting is uh, the resolution of the vertices in the mesh. So every vertice will, or every vertex will have a, a normal associated with it. And that's what we're getting here. What we want is all the information that happens in between the vertices, which is what is in the, the normal texture. So uh, let me grab our texture node here, and I'm going to upload our normal texture. And then you can see it's primarily blue. Um, that is uh, the way our normal map is going to look. Uh, it has to do with the, the three values x, y, z of each vector being in RGB. So uh, this is what a normal tangent space normal map would look like. Um, now, to take this, we have to combine it in with the world normal. We're going to do what's called perturbing the normal. And so right now, uh, that node is sitting here in scene. Um, and I, I should mention that uh, as we uh, move forward towards our launch date, we will actually be moving things around a little bit. So if you see that this has changed, uh, if, you, if you're watching uh, at a later date, uh, we will be moving the nodes around somewhat in our in our hierarchy here. 
Um, I just want you to, to be cognizant of that fact so that uh, you're not caught off guard as to if the nodes have moved around in the category somewhat. Um, so perturb normal is what we will need to use uh, to bring a normal map. And you can see we still need the world position and the world normal. Uh, we get the UV because UV was already in the scene from the other texture nodes. And then uh, normal map is what we are going to wire our normal map to. And so we can quickly do that here. And then strength is um, how strong the normal map is. And that this gives you the ability to make the normal uh, magnified or, or soften the normal a little bit so you really have some control over how much uh, we are perturbing the normal. Um, so then the next part of this, let me hold down Shift and drag around a few of these nodes. And I'm going to pull these back because we need a little bit of extra room. And Shift click on that one and bring these back. OK, so our world position is right here. And we need to bring this into our perturb normal node. And then we also need the world normal from the mesh to come in here as well. So now what we've done is we've connected our world position, our world normal from the mesh, the UV and the normal map texture and strength came in automatically. And we're going to leave that at one for now. And now this is going to replace the connection we had in world normal of lights which previously was the world normal of the mesh alone. So now this is both of them together. And you can see we had something pop in over here. And as I roll the light, you can see there's a bunch of uh, texture on the surface. Now, the texture doesn't look right. And the reason being is that when I come in here to perturb normal, you'll notice that in the properties, we have uh, a few options to invert axes. Um, when we are talking about uh, the asset that I built, it was a GLB file that we brought in. Uh, the direction for the normal for GLB is opposite of the direction of the normal for Babylon. So uh, GLB uses an OpenGL formatted normal, where Babylon uses a DirectX formatted normal. So the easiest way to do that is to invert the Y axis. So as soon as I click this, you'll see now everything, instead of looking like um, uh, bumps on the surface. Now these all look like craters. Uh, the other part of it is that GLB, uh, the winding order of the mesh is opposite of the winding order of the mesh in Babylon. So we also want to invert the X axis. And what that does is that gets the light all working the correct way because we are unwrapping the, the mesh in the same way in both the GLB and uh, Babylon if we invert the X axis. So that's one thing to, to take into account. If your lighting doesn't look right when you've applied Perturb Normal, make sure that your normal format is correct and that your handedness is also correct. So now you can see that we have uh, both the uh, x-axis and y-axis conforming so it all render, renders correctly. So now we've got this nice uh, roll off of light being uh, perturbed on the, the mesh from the normal map. So let's go to full screen in this. In fact, I'll just close this down because we don't need it anymore. And there we go. Let's pull this out so that we can zoom in a little bit. And then you can really see on the surface all of the light interplaying with the normal map as well as the spec and gloss. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense uh, in the way we wire up textures and, and uh, normal maps so that we can get all of it to work together with lighting in the scene. Uh, if you have any questions or any ideas about uh, uh, other topics that you want to see, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, we hope you like this series. And uh, if you do, we would love it if you'd subscribe and, and continue joining us in the future. I hope you have a, a great time with this and have a wonderful day. Take care.